ago Oliver asked me to give an interview I kind of got went back and forth as to whether I should do this or not but then I was digging around doing some house cleaning and I found an old journal of mine from uh 07 08 and it was written when after I got eliminated when we got taken to this place called location annex where they hold us for whatever amount of time they wanted us to hold us for until we actually got sent home for real. Not So there's two times you get sent home on the show. You get sent home when you get eliminated off ca on camera, but then you don't really go home, home. They, they take you to a hotel room and they kind of don't give you, they lock you up and they don't give you the key. Um, you get to go home when they tell you to go home. But anyways, during that time, I did keep a journal to uh, maintain my sanity. And I just wrote down a bunch of things that I didn't want, to, that I knew I would probably forget if I um, hadn't journaled it, um, just to kind of archive um, the psychology of what it is to go through on that show. So here it is. And I'll even uh, open, I'm not going to reveal everything, obviously, but um, right. just to prove, it says right here, November... 21st 07 hang on location annex 6 41 p.m new york city but now allison correct me if i am wrong there was a part that you bookmarked that you said you could or would yes, yes. Okay. um so to give you context at the time let me see what does it say i was staying at the athena hotel in new york um it was right by madison square garden um I was with one of the other girls that got eliminated before me. Um, and then the other girl who got eliminated before me. Um, so I was taken there and she was my roommate because the girl before her, um, they didn't, the producers didn't go into detail, but it sounded like she was having trouble coping with what happened. And I don't know where they took her. They either took her to a different location or maybe they let her go home early. Not sure. Anyways, um, so what I wrote down was obviously just the emotions that were going through my head, um, but also um, some of the terminology that the producers use called, they use what's called an OTF or an on the fly interview where, uh, and again, it's not just on AT, on ANTM, but like whenever it's just a one-on-one -on -one where they have that crazy effects going on in the background and whoever is talking is just talking about the events that occurred at a given time or a given episode and like what their current thoughts or emotions are. Um, so that's an OTF interview. Um, so anyways, don't use that term. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it says example off camera interviews means the part of the show when an individual does a monologue talking about recent circumstances, this interview is usually done by one of the show's producers An abbreviation for this secluded interviews is OTF, which is what we were just talking about. So I did a little script where it's like producer, Allison, producer, Allison. So producer says to me, so Allison, in your casting tape, I thought you were going to be more outgoing. I noticed in the house, you're one of the quiet ones. And they just kind of pause because they want you to talk, right? They kind of want to bait you into something. And it's like, it's almost like they're trying to get me to say like, oh, but I'm not quiet. I'm just this or whatever. So, um, and then they'll say like, oh, by the side note, your voice will be the only one being aired on TV, right? Because so the viewer doesn't know that there's a producer behind the camera asking you all these questions or kind of like, I want to say almost coercing you into getting you to say something interesting to get you to say something interesting about whatever is going to sell, to sell the show and get ratings essentially, right? So then I would say, well, my personality, I guess, doesn't mesh very well with blah, blah, blah. I wasn't able to get words in because everyone was talking over each other. So then the producer would, would say something like, okay, so he, then they would tell me what to say. Don't like, they would say like, say it like this, or don't say it like that. So then they would say like, okay, we'll say, I'm not able to get words in instead of I wasn't present and don't like, don't present in past tense, present in the present tense. Okay. And I'm like, okay. So I, then I reiterate it again. So exactly how they would say it. 
I guess my personality doesn't mesh very well. I'm not able to get it at word and because everyone talks over each other rather than was talking over each other. Again, present tense, not past tense. Um, let's see. Now the editors will then use that statement and mix it with footage they take at the house with a group of girls interrupting each other's conversations. They decide whether or not that concept is good enough to air on TV. Now, how do they stir up drama? They can make even minor conflicts look like bitter animosities. So the producer would say, so again, on an OTF. So I understand an elimination is coming up soon. Who do you want to go home next? I could, and I would respond something like, I could care less as long as it is not someone who's Allison. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, a pretty... <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> um, I don't think that wasn't good enough for them. They would say something like, come on, don't tell me that you don't care. If it were up to you, you wouldn't want to go home. I'm like, well, yeah, obviously. So they're trying to get me to say something about somebody else, even though at the time I'm just like, well, as long as it's not me. Mm -hmm. um, didn't pan out that way, but that's how that conversation. And then the producer, once again, would correct me. Speak in complete sentences. I want so-and-so to go home because dot, 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 blah, blah, blah. So finally it was like, okay, um, it would be in secluded environments after we hadn't really gotten any sleep. Um, we only got to eat or go to the bathroom when we were instructed to do so. So, I mean, our physiological responses to these questions were kind of more primal than I guess than normal because if you take that compounded with there's all these lights, cameras on you and kind of that pressure, um, then finally you're like, all right, I'm really tired. I want to go home. So I'm just going to tell them what they want to hear so I can just get this over with. So then I would respond back with, I guess I want so-and-so to go home because for one, she only auditioned for the show because blah, blah, blah. I don't know, whatever petty reason. Um, so the producer then would correct me again. The other day, so-and-so stole your shirt. How do you feel about that? Or something like that. And I don't even remember who it was or what happened or whatever. Or for all you know, sometimes they could be making it up and maybe it didn't really happen. And they just kind of get that momentary shock out of you. Um, so then I would say, so-and-so snatched my shirt and she is blah, blah, blah. I don't know how she's going to, I don't know. Um, and then the journal says the editors will then take those comments and put them between scenes. The cameras caught of me and the, and the girls um, interacting with each other. Um, now, of course they ask these girls the same questions about me. Again, if this is enticing enough, then it will air on TV. If not, then we, they just keep going through the motions until we tell them something that is usable for the content. Um, and then I conclude this journal entry. Tune in next week to see who hates who. <laughs> so, yep, that was what was going on in my 18-year-old mind at the time. Or Actually, it was my birthday during the location annex or like after I got eliminated um, during that time. I turned 19. So I, I was either 18 or 19. I can't remember one of the two. Well, first of all, thank you so much for sharing that with us. And now looking back on that in this time, how much would you say of the show is realistic reality? 100% um, you authentically and how much of it you feel like is contrived? Depends on who's in charge or who has the final say and what gets aired. I think... There's some truth, I guess, to some of the stories with these girls. Um, but I don't think that they're speaking or acting in a way that they normally would in real life if they were among their friends or family, just because the environment that's created is very much, it's almost like a social experiment. Um, because I remember when they, I can't even remember how many of us there were. I top 10, top 12, top 13, I don't remember, something like that. Um, I remember this is off camera. Miss J was actually the one that kind of gave us a little bit forewarning of what it was going to be like um, being on the show. And uh, he said that we won't get much sleep and 
there was just going to be cameras everywhere. And sure enough, there was. And I just think it has a weird effect on some people. And obviously some people, um, they have different personalities. And I think when you're having all that going on in your head and you're given very strict instructions to not acknowledge any of the camera people, you're not, you're not supposed to acknowledge any of the producers behind the camera. You can't use anybody's names while they're filming you. Um, you can use like anybody who's on camera, you can acknowledge them like any of the other contestants or Tyra, Miss J, J Manuel or whoever. I mean, you can talk about them. Um, but like, whoever it is behind the camera who's running things, you cannot acknowledge them. Um, and they give you, and you, there are repercussions if you do that. Um, so we just had to abide by a very strict set of rules. And I think when you have that going on in your head, but then also you're trying to compete and then you're living with all these girls you're trying to compete with. Um, I think what ends up happening is um, we took it out on each other um and again i don't think this is just only conducive to america's next top model i think that could be true for the same could be said for shows like like the kardashians or the bachelor or whatever and um that's why i think sometimes um worst case scenario you hear about all these um former reality tv stars who have like these horrible drug addictions or mental health problems or whatever. And, um, every time I hear about that, I'm just like, yeah, that's not a surprise to me at all. It's, mm -hmm. um, cause it, it can be pretty psychologically draining. Um, so it really depends. I mean, uh, I kind of already knew, um, right after I got eliminated or even before I got eliminated, if I'm really being honest that I knew, I, I knew I wasn't going to be portrayed as the good girl on the show. I can tell you that. Um, but it, it's weird because after it's all said and done, you almost kind of feel like it's there's kind of a thread that kind of holds all of you together as the as contestants um, or almost like I don't want to sound too cheesy, but like a sisterhood almost just mm -hmm. because it's almost like going through a fraternity or a sorority hazing. And even though it's frustrating and it's almost like, a, again, like a social experiment. And at the time, like when you're in the heat of the moment, you might be taking out your anger and frustration on each other because there's just literally nobody else you can take it out on, or there's no other outlet that you have because there's, you're not, you're not allowed to read. You're not allowed to have, <laughs> since it was 08, we weren't allowed to have our iPods or CD players or whatever it was at the time. Um, you, there was really nothing you could do to entertain yourself because they wanted you to interact with each other as much as possible. Now in a normal setting, it's like you're with a group of people, you know, you might bond with some other, with some and Oh my gosh, my phone again. I'm going to turn this off. Um, so in any other scenario in real life, it's like, okay, well, if this person is annoying me or if I don't get along with this person, I'm just going to go over here and avoid them or listen to my headphones or read my book or, whatever, go talk to somebody else. But since you're in such a confined space and again, there's cameras surrounding you that are pushing you to like talk, interact, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, it, it just, it gets frustrating because there's really no space um, for yourself to kind of um, take a time out. Come one, come all, 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 come all,